Neo 2 was a lot of things. Ethereal. Peaceful. Aggressive. Demanding. Enriching. It's almost paradoxical how a game so punishing can be so rewarding, even after tireless hours and energy have been consumed playing it. What's the appeal of a game so difficult, so challenging that it requires a bare minimum, the focus as sharp as a blade? In no uncertain terms, it defies us to endeavor, and asks us only to accept the fair scrutiny of our personal limits of capacity for knowledge and creativity, in exchange for an exhilarating sense of accomplishment earned from effort and mastery, a release, a freedom from this mortal coil to integrate with the dream of the virtual plane of existence. Neo 2 is an action game, tried and true. It's an RPG where creative enhancements, character builds, and personal expression are at the forefront of the hands-on experience. There is a steadfast, forward-moving momentum, a lively dynamic involved in both the richness of the narrative and the radiant combat of the campaign, each intricately designed and implemented intuitively, making replay value perhaps the most important aspect of a game, not just a bonus, but an absolute necessity and an obligation for anyone seeking to be the best that they can be. In my original review, I said that Neo 2 isn't perfect. I'd like to clarify that remark. Neo 2 wasn't ever a flawed game in and of itself, but even with the mastery inherent in its blueprint, it had small room for improvement. Well, after a series of free patches and robust DLCs, all thanks to the passionate and dedicated developer team, Neo 2 has solidified itself as one of the most complete games ever made, and it is very much an ongoing experience. The timely remaster boasts a title that is often given, rarely earned. How many games can really be said to be complete? Here is a title of distinction and a demonstration of what extreme care, wisdom, and imagination can deliver. One year later, I'm sure Neo 2 is a 10 out of 10. Let me show you why. There has never been an action RPG with so much variety, so many combat options to choose from, each with their own distinct style and efficacy, so many gameplay possibilities, so many hidden mechanics and secrets that have to be learned instead of taught, areas to be discovered and nuance to be found and appreciated. Every single aspect of the game's design is confident, not in a loud, self-assured way, 
but in the refined, astutely polished, and sagacious implementation of story, character, and the unlimited utility of choice. Nothing is excessive and nothing is circumspect. No expense is spared in Neo 2, and absolutely everything acquired in the game is earned and earned by doing. Every item you receive has a usage and can be kept or recycled, sourced and resourced in order to forge something new or strengthen something old. Every piece of loot is satisfying to receive and requires both skill and luck to find. This is arguably the best loot game of all time, or at least the game with the best loot system. The initiative of grinding never gets tedious because there are always better enchantments that you can apply, whether manually or by luck when you finally put it all together, it feels deserved. The world is interactive and each level is layered with surprises and clever disguises. The art of combat in Neo 2 is how all the different complementary elements combine in cohesion to make a whole greater than the sum of the parts. Everything present in the game serves a purpose and nothing is merely an auxiliary part. There is both quantity and quality inherent within each characteristic of the design. From the multitude of learned techniques across a plethora of special skill trees, to the advantages of donning a full set of armor or equipment from hundreds of sets, with unique ability bonuses and appearances, a trove of nearly a dozen different weapon types, each supplemented by comprehensive Amyo magic and Ujutsu powers, three yokai forms with the protection from numerous celestial guardian spirits that each provide selective abilities and attack or defense bonuses, augmented based on the selection of the soul cores acquired from defeating each distinct enemy type, each with exclusive moves and stat buffs, the clans then grant you awards and bonuses and allow you to compete with other players for the top ranking. The friendly and adorable Kadama and Sudama, they grant you special blessings and equipment. The interactive hub, the dojo where you hone your individual skills and tactics. The decorative tea house. The all inclusive blacksmith. And the list goes on. There are thousands upon thousands of combinations and ways that everything can go together. There are countless solutions to every boss battle. Strategies manageable depending on your awareness and your selective abilities. You can make yourself overpower or set your own limitations, but there is no easy mode to this game. Building a character the right way takes time, but there is no right way for everyone, only what's right for you. You have to figure it all out, and the work that you put in is what determines how much you can get out of what amounts to an everlasting enjoyment. I have hundreds of hours put into the game, playing Neo 2 never gets old, and that declaration only makes me part of the consensus. Neo 2's cooperative mode is one of the very best of its kind. The Tori Gate is an extended feature essential to the replay value that connects a whole community of players with diverse skill sets and capabilities that can offer assistance and lessons to be learned by giving exposure to new builds and strategies courtesy of others. And it adds a general boost in variety to the gameplay. It is a user-friendly, convenient, and practical tool reliant on camaraderie and sometimes trolls to mitigate the most formidable levels and bosses, and it will also inspire you to raise your own level of play to a greater standard to not only succeed in missions, but in order to improve yourself as a player and to impress others. The co-op is so constructive, so effective in this game that, through expedition mode, you can venture through the main story and its submissions in their entirety and battle through combat arenas with up to two other players on your way to victory. This is a charitable way to allow players to find better equipment and rank up and progress faster via the aid of teamwork. 
Teaming up doesn't cheapen the experience though, as the difficulty increases with each additional visitor, ensuring that everyone has to be at their very best to pass the test. You can summon players individually within a mission at your discretion, and likewise, search in a random encounter or a specific mission at a stranger or friend's bequest. This is extremely helpful for any player or players that find themselves in serious need of support against the hard to beat encounter encounter with a boss or a group of enemies. You can summon benevolent graves as well as enemy revenants, AI dropped by real players that are facsimiles of that player's build. Defeating revenants gives you glory for your clan that you can spend and rank up with, as well as a chance to acquire that player's equipment and rare gear that might otherwise be unobtainable. All in all, this is a very advantageous component that adds so much to the fun of playing Neo 2 and helps to elevate the game from merely a single player experience, albeit an incredible one, to a shared experience. And it also accentuates the nearly infinite permutations of the building mechanics that are on full display through interactions with other players. You rarely find someone that looks or plays identical to you. Neo 2 just has so much to do. Neo 2 is one of the hardest games in existence, one of the most taxing that I've ever played. But even when I'm compelled to cry, BULLSHIT, in frustration, I can't stay mad at the game for long. And no matter how much subjective hardship I go through, no matter how many times I have to hit retry, I never want to give up. Winning can be a relief, but there is no pyrrhic victory in a game that is so skill-based, so cleverly designed and artfully executed. It's easy to recognize how fair and balanced the game actually is if you take the time to learn and observe. Patience is the virtue, and you have to give this game the patience and respect it deserves. The degree of difficulty involved in the game is staggering. From the damage that you incur from attacks from enemies both strong and weak that can often kill you in a mere hit or two, to the very calculated assembly of groups of enemies that conspire against you, the propensity of enemies to spam projectiles and elemental attacks, and the sheer aggression of your foes, and the nimble pace of the game forces you to play at. You have a vital mechanic in this game called Key that enemies share as well. Consider how, against human enemies, you often have an advantage as they share similar attributes in regards to health and key and can be staggered with simpler measures that apply equally to you. The yokai enemies are often much more complicated to engage with as they have access to the dark realm, which buffs them and nerfs you significantly. This is such a shrewd and instinctive mechanic that should be the standard for all ARPGs. You have to pay attention to your own key as much, if not more so, than your own health bar, because if you don't, the consequences can be damning. And if you can manage to deplete the key of your enemy, you will gain the very edge you need to usurp them. There are five difficulty settings in Neo 2. The first time playing is arguably the most challenging, though each new dream mode is progressively more unforgiving by design and not simply by RPG level scaling. New enemies can appear in place of old enemies and can gain new moves and abilities that you'd never expect them to, upping the tempo and the pressure. On the hardest difficulty, they even regenerate health, giving you no time for a reprieve. The idea is to stay close and learn to react with reflexes. You can increase the difficulty even further by adding a stone of penance, and then really start to feel attrition. Mainly, this game is just perfect for anyone who appreciates the satisfaction of besting powerful and unrelenting beasts, thereby overcoming seemingly impossible odds through skill, courage, and determination. The story is the most underrated aspect of Neo 2, one of the most underrated and understated stories I've ever seen in a game, and I'm baffled by anyone who would dismiss this pivotal piece of the puzzle. The story of Neo 2 is set during the Sengoku period, a time of great consequence that revolutionized Japan, and it is brilliantly regaled and expertly retold in a manner that faithfully retains the context of biographical events and infuses them with the creative liberties intrinsic to historical fiction in order to create an endearing and unforgettable narrative, nothing short of a grand, epic adventure. 
You play as the protagonist that is your door creation, existing in a world of colorful characters and folklore fantasy against the backdrop of historical relevance and intrigue. Your yokai slayer embarks on a noble crusade fighting against enemies both mortal and otherworldly, forming bonds and friendships to help shape the history of Japan and fate itself. Almost entirely in the Japanese language, at times it feels like a silent game, one that is nevertheless enthralling, but make no mistake. So much is going on in the story and so many actions have reverberating effects. The story is presented linearly, and many events are experienced and told firsthand, while other key developments happen off screen or are relayed to us as preludes or postscripts through richly detailed diagrams with voiceover interludes that showcase the rewriting of Japan's maps and history in real time, or through the sly use of silent intertitles with ominous background music signaling something foreboding and mysterious in the near future. These plot devices are so cleverly conceived and adeptly articulated to us that the main reveal of the game is always far from our reach while our interest is kept constant. Gradually, the tone of the story changes and with it, the characters and their motivations. Devastating occurrences unfold and drastic events take place that are both unexpected and widely anticipated. To explain what I mean, consider how the clever style of narration reveals to us many clues that would necessarily shatter the suspense and undermine any notion of uncertainty, if not for the subtle way that the story developments creep up on you because of the ingenious way the connections to the characters are formed thanks to the portrayals of universal themes of friendship and loyalty, and the incredible performances that range from the light-hearted yet ambitious vagabond Tokichiro, the hasty yet righteous warrior Mumyo, the imperious yet inspiring leader Lord Nobunaga Oda, and the emergence of the expedient and prophetic ruler Hideyoshi are enough to keep the intrigue and even astonishment going. There are so many characters in between that play an expanding and important part in the story's maturity and charm us all the way through. The journey through the steaming parade is elaborate and ecstatic. <laughs> The production values in Neo 2 are miraculous for a game with only a three year development cycle, and in fact, are on the short list of the most impressive of any game ever made. This is the category where Neo 2 illuminates even brighter through the use of impeccably crafted intangibles like sound design and art design. Every soundtrack has a different mood, a different sound, a different vibe, and a different feeling. There is sentiment set in each tone through the progressive poetry of the map music, ranging from upbeat encouragement to heavy-hearted reflection pieces. The effect is so strong that a whole story could be communicated this way. The triumphs are celebratory. The departures melancholic. The battles riveting. And even the death track is euphoric. In contrast to the tempestuous combat, exploration is easygoing. The world design is beautiful and ornate, varied from one level to the next, and even the similarities are expansive in their vivid imagination. Consider some of the most striking examples, like the glistening autumn leaves in the forest of the mysterious One Night Castle. The ostentatious elegance, symbolic of greed, and the palatial estate in the Golden Castle. The purple haze of twilight missions. The pale blue sheens of the mausoleum of evil. The tranquil harmony of the interim. The moonlight fright at dusk.
and the calm of dawn among the cherry trees and cherry blossom view in Indigo. Arguably one of the greatest levels ever written and designed. The title of this oh level, God, this like the here. others, is brilliantly self-referential and the real meaning lies in the poignant confrontation and reunion with an old friend as he views the cherry blossoms for the last time. Neo 2 has one of the greatest and most varied aesthetics that I've ever experienced in a game. So much attention is paid to the smallest details and so many attributes contribute to a feel of transporting us to another time and place. This is what video games are all about. Neo 2 The Complete Edition is a masterpiece, a 10 out of 10, an unforgettable, earth-shattering experience, phenomenal, extraordinary, next level art. One of the greatest sequels of all time, the greatest action RPG ever made, and one of the greatest games of all time. Thank you to Team Ninja for making the game, and to everyone who watches this video.